Hi and welcome to this video where I'll be looking at how the basic GIS operations are implemented in ArcGIS Pro. So first of all I'll just launch ArcGIS Pro and uh, we'll see how this piece of software functions. So this is the follow-up of that video on that the conceptual um, basic GIS function. So this is the start of uh, of um, ArcGIS Pro and it tells me that there's an update I should install, that's fine. Um, I've used it before so there are some um, some previously used recent used uh, projects. Um, I could start I could browse around to find an older project or I can start out with a new blank project. Up in this corner it says that I am signed into ArcGIS Online it doesn't have any influences on this video, but in the later video we will be talking about using ArcGIS Online in our work with ArcGIS Pro. So, um, first of all, I just start out with a blank project. I'll give it a name. Let's call it RUC for Oscar University Campus. And um, it will install it at my default path. Um, I can change this and then store my project somewhere else, but I'll just leave it as a default to, for this. It uh, will also say that it will create a new folder uh, for this project. And what we'll see is that inside that folder, it will also create a basic data store for its data. So it has now created my project. And what we see is that we got this catalog, um, which um, is the basic means of navigating um, data. In here we have a database, and if I double click on that, we have, it has this default database that it has created for the project. We will also see that it has folders, and ArcGIS is a bit strange in this, is that at the moment on a new project, the folder um, is empty, there's no folders. That's because ArcGIS does not look throughout all folders on the computer. We have to assign some specific folders to each project. So if I want to use some of my general existing data, I'll have to right click on this folder and say connect to folder. And then say I have on my S drive um, data. Um, I'll just leave it as, as data and connect to that. So. What we see now is if I go down into folders, I have a folder called data and a folder called hook. So this is a project folder and this is my server folder where I have my general data stores. So if I want to load some existing data, I can go to my data folder, national, Denmark, go down and look at traffic. And I'll load the railroads which is this one here. Good. If I now right click on it, so I right click on my data layer. So a data layer here is a data source, which is equivalent to these um, relations in uh, the relational data model. So in this case, I'll just click on it and I'll say, I'll add it to a new map. I will also add it to a global scene or local scene, these are for 3D visualization, but I'll be using a 2D visualization. So I say add to map. What now happens is that it creates a map. And um, in this map, we have our railroads. They are displayed in a light blue color. If I want to change that, I can easily do it by just clicking on the symbol here and then choosing that I want to have them as railroads. Um, so I'll have some, this standard black with hatching on it. Um, note that this has already made a symbology for, uh, tab for me here. Um, so it, uh, I can close it. These tabs, is this is a setting I have preferred. So I say open things over here in, the, in this area here and to open something new. Um, so I have the base map and uh, ArcGIS always starts with a base map. You can change the base map from up here. 
and you, there are some different settings you can choose for um, your base map. So if you prefer to have an open street map as your background, you can change and it will load an open street map as your background image. So um, we uh, can now, I'll just zoom, see if I can zoom in uh, on, so uh, basically um, navigation is uh, up here and here I, there's an explanation that so at the moment I'm just right clicking on two fingers in this mouse here so I'm using my scroll function to zoom in at the university um, So, um, I will probably, because for the convenience, I would like to have a bit more zoomed in. So I can type my scale down here. So I want to zoom this to 2,500. Um, I just type in the number I wanted to zoom and it will zoom in to that scale. Good. So now I have this is the campus and I will, this is where I would like to add some new data. Um, so in order to create a uh, new feature class or relation as they are called in general terms, I will go into my catalog tool and I can navigate to my database folder where I have this default database that is created to get in the project. So this is uh, ArcGIS is preferred uh, physical storage. It's a file database. Um, so in there, I can right click on it and then I can then say create new feature class. So again, feature class is, is this terminology for a relation. So I will create this and I will call it uh, buildings. Buildings. And I choose the geometry to be a polygon. I will choose points, lines, and polygons, and multi points for in that. Um, and I can choose an additional coordinate system. So we have an X and a Y. Um, I can also choose to have Z coordinates, so I can do 3D modeling. Or I could have M, which is measured coordinates, so distances along a network. Um, I don't want any of these, so I turn them off. Go to the next. Here it asks me which they call what they call fields, um, what we in general call attributes, and uh, if I want to have a one saying what is the use of a building, so which department or whatever it is, I can create a uh, a attribute called use, and it is it's a text, and the maximum length is uh, 255. I can change that to let's say I won't be using more than 50. Doesn't matter for a little demo like this how, what it is. Um, if it's going to be lots of data of course this only takes up a fraction of what 250 characters would take up. So I have a use and I will have another one called um, students that says how many students would be on average in that building at a given time. And that is of course not a text, but it is a number. And I'll choose a short integral because that goes from minus 32,000 to plus 32,000. So that's more than enough. So I have now created these attributes or as they call them fields that I'll be needing. I can uh, also, if I want, uh, I can give a default value. So let's say that um, I come from the Institute of People and Technology in Danish abbreviated IMT. So if I want that as my default use, I can choose use here. And down on the default, I can write uh, IMT. Oh, didn't really write that, did I? Uh, click. IMT. So now it has a default value, and the same goes for student. I could say that in general, as props, so let's say 
200 students uh, 200 students in a building uh, probably too, that's too much let's say 100 so um, once I've done this I can um, go to the next it will ask me the coordinate system it will start out with some peculiar coordinate system or oh, not peculiar but it's because that's the coordinate system of the background image that's not the one I want um, I want to use the Danish standard one which if I can navigate down here these are all the different coordinate systems that they support and basically we can combine them back to geographic coordinate system so latitude longitudes and projected so typically in meters um, and as I talked about in the video on referencing location we will in Denmark we typically use a UTM so that's the projection universal transversal locator and we are in Europe somewhere and the earth shape the datum that we normally use in Denmark is this one that is a European standard ETIS so we go down to this European terrestrial reference system and finally Denmark is well it's shared between UTM 32 and 33 but um, strictly speaking the university is in UTM zone 32 but traditional we do mapping of the whole of Denmark in UTM zone 32 so I choose that one as my um, coordinate system that I'll be using uh, and you can see it's up here written in the in the blue box as the one that I'll be using so next and um, I can see say it has a default resolution uh, and it's calculated so I'll just use that and it has a position um, that I'll just also leave as the default I never change any of these and I'm finished so now it creates this feature class of relation in the database called hook so hopefully it will be finished in a moment So if I now double click in here, we can see that in that one is a building. So in my university here, yeah, so I have my databases and in my databases, I have my buildings. One of the really nice things with ArcGIS is, uh, is that it's very good for working with metadata. So over here we have some metadata. Um, at the moment I haven't typed any, but it's very quick and easy to do. I can go in and I can edit metadata I could give them some tags so this is is hook and it's a demo um, it is um, having of okay mapping of buildings um, uh, and the description I'll say uh, There are two attributes. There are two attributes. Um, use that specifies building use. Uh, and students. That is the average average um, number of number average number of so give them some description um, of course it's not, not so important this one I'll delete it in a moment but um, in general it's a really good idea to type in metadata on your your uh, files so you later can remember what it is this one is a copyright of me so I've done this um, and 
I can add some additional scale areas and things like that. But I'll just leave it as it is and I'll simply save information. So it's now saved and I can close it. So the good thing is now when I, if I click on this one, it will show me the tags and, um, and all our metadata input. <coughs> this is especially relevant when we, in another video, we we'll work with ArcGIS Online, the portal for placing things on the web, then it will reuse the information I've typed in here. So I'm uh, ready to go. I have my own data. Uh, and just like with the railroads before, I can right click on it. And now I can either put it into a new map or I can add it to the existing map. It's called map, so add to map. So now if I click on my map, nothing really has happened because there's no data there. But over here in this content, um, which is this layer control, it has um, added my buildings. So here I've got my, it says I have my great thing that is a building here. In order to edit, I can go up to this, this, uh, this new version, this ArcGIS Pro has this a ribbon system. So whenever I choose something from the name of the ribbon, so if I choose edit ribbon, it will give me tools relevant to editing. If I choose the insert, I can have things for inserting. Analysis gives me different analysis tools. So if I want to do an edit, that would be down here in toolbox. But I'll go into edit here and I will choose um, create. So I want to create some data. What has happened now, it, uh, it has shown me I can create data in the railroads and I can create data in my buildings. I just want to create data in my buildings. So I just click on my building. It will then ask me how do I want to create it as a drawing a polygon, as tracing all lines, drawing all ones. Most of the rook buildings, as you can see, are square. So I'll just choose the square tool. And now my, my, my little mouse is a very small one, but it's down here at the corner of this building. So I can click once, drag across, and then drag down. So I've created a square. Um, and it has automatically populated its attribute values um, with my default ones. If I want to look at the attributes or edit them, I can click on this attribute one here. And we can see that it has said the use is IMT and there are um, 100 students. I don't think that's right. Um, I think this is probably um, easy. Um, and I don't know, there are probably more students in that building. So I'll enter that. So I've entered the attributes um, from the default values or something appropriate for that building. Um, and I can simply continue with uh, adding my new ones. It, it is still in my edit mode, so I don't have to do anything else. I can start editing uh, or creating. Um, otherwise, I can, as you can see, oops, as you can see, um, it will start it placing a new one there. I can press escape to get that, get out of this thing here. And that, I didn't want a building there, so I just deleted it. And I'll just zoom back to my uh, 2500 scale there. Good. Um, I can create, or I can just click down here on my create. And I can say, okay, I want to do a uh, another square building. And I'll uh, take this building up here, drag across, drag down, save, finished. Uh, and again, I can go in and check the attributes, say what they were. So in this case, it is IMT um, and it is uh, 100 students. That's fine. Um, if there are things that are a bit more complicated, um, such as uh, as um, this bit main building up here. I just go to map and change the navigation so I don't accidentally create a new thing. And I'll just zoom a bit in on this building here. So I have this building, you see this building in one. If I'm going to create this building, um, I can go again back to my create. 
and this time I can't use the square so I'll change to this polygon tool and um, it has a bit of a strange form here um, I think it will be best to start oh, something like this uh, and you can see it's giving me some measures as I go along on um, my constructions of my object um, so and uh, let's say I'm finished here so I can right click and say finish okay there's clearly a mistake here it that was lacking something um, and uh, it can be difficult to see with this uh, coloring so what I could do is that I can go back and what I would normally do in my content is I can again click right click on my buildings or I could just click down there um, and see if there was a uh, some form of hatched pattern that I could use uh, or transparency um, there's a grave with some transparency on so I can see underneath here um, what I want to do is I want to change this this is of course again in the edit mode but it has this one called modify so I can go in and choose modify and there's lots of things I can modify what I want to do is I want to these dots where I click they call vertices and what I want to do is I want to modify one of these so I go up and find vertices where they are there and um, basically I could go down and say plus or I can be a bit um, I can right click here and say add vertice and then I can move my mouse to the vertice and then I can drag it into place so I'm finished and my building has now got that shape I wanted another special case is this building 02 um, which has a hole in the middle so that's again there I have to do something special in order to create that one so what I'll do in that type of cases is that I'll go to my create and create a building and I will do it as I could do as my polygon here and then I'll start with the hole so I'll start by constructing this inner square once that constructed I'll right click and say finish part so that means I'm not quite finished I've done something of it but not all of it so I say finish part and then I'll draw the outer perimeter and see what happens is that is where there are two overlapping objects there will be a hole so the principle in ArcGIS is that if there is an even number of objects there's a hole and if there's an uneven there's an object so I'll just click there and say that I'm finished so now it's created this nice object with a hole in um, and uh, I'll just uh, and let's let it stay with this um, now there's one thing I would like this when I created this building 01 I also created it as a um, as an IMT building but it is not so I would like to change the attributes of it so in order to do that I will choose my selection tool and I'll click on this one so now it is selected when it's selected I can go in and find to my attributes and say this one is admin Uh, well, admin and canteen or whatever rather and uh, is uh, probably at any given time there's about 500 students in that building 
So now I've changed um, these data. So now I'm happy with my data. I will for you wait a little more. So I just save it. And um, zoom out to my 2500 point here. So now I've got my buildings, they're a bit difficult to see. I'll now change how they are displayed. So I'll go to content and this time I will right click on it and say symbology. Okay. Uh, until now, we've been working with all buildings that we have been making had the same symbology. Uh, what I can do is that I can change it to unique values. So now I'll go in and uh, if I go in and change to use, it will say that there are these, um, I mean, this made three different use types. So there's admin and there's ESA and there's IMT. And I'm happy with that. Um, so, um, I'll just leave that as is. But there's one really neat thing with uh, ArcGIS, and that is that if I now go to my Create Features, you can see the same colors here. So if I want to make a new admin building, so I don't remember the default was that it was an IMT building, but if I choose this one, say Create, and uh, I'll just use a square, and create this building uh, down here, is also admin. This building is now automatically created as an admin, and um, and we can see that if we look at uh, the attributes of it. So if I go to attributes, we can see that this building has admin and 100 students. Um, that probably not that many. Um, there's probably only 20 students in the service desk at any time. So. And that way, it you using my um, when I was in content and I said gave them categories or colors, but so symbology and uh, giving each one a unique value based on an attribute. Not only can I see better what I'm doing, but it also makes my editing much much quicker. And this also is especially important when we later talk about when we work with the data in uh, in uh, ArcGIS Online. Um, so I'm um, finished making this. I'll just create a new feature class, um, Paths, to um, show another little important feature. So I'll just go to my database again, right click on it, say New. And do a feature class, so a new relation if we talk in general, and say this is a path. Of course, in this case it will be a line geometry, and I don't want set values, and I don't want any attributes, and the coordinate system has automatically chosen the one I chose before, so that's nice, it's the right one. Um, and I can live with default values here and here, so I'm finished. So it has now created um, this feature class here. Oops. Um, so what I can do now is that I will go into my, if I look at my content, yeah, my map, um, we can see it's not yet been created in the here we can't see it so what I go do is my catalog I can expand this one I can right click off my newly created path and I can say edit to current map and now it will be available here um, as a path I'll change the color of it to uh, something like that so we can see what we're doing and um, yeah. So now I'm ready to create some paths. The important thing with this creating paths is, uh, let's say create here, is that I'm here. When I start drawing, note this thing called snapping. Um, if I want to make a path that goes from 
this building and over to this building. Um, snapping means that, as you can see at the moment, as my mouse goes close to something, this little square, and it says what it is has snapped to. This is controlled by this snapping function up here. If I turn it off, nothing happens when I go close to our objects. If and what I normally do is that I don't have this edge. Turn, I can turn that one off and leave this one called vertex snapping. So what happens is um, I will we'll be needing an edge to start, by the way. So I'll just turn the edge on again. Um, so I want to connect these two with my path. So I'll create a path starting. Oops, I haven't turned snapping on. Sorry. So snapping is now on. So if I go down here and say I'll start at the edge, go a bit out, down, across, down to there, and into the building. Uh, I'll make a new path starting from here from the building, going across and down, and I'll just let the path go right up to this point here. And finish it there. So if I now go back to what I normally work with, let me adjust my vertices on my snapping, I can now create a path and it goes up here and it will only snap to the end because there's a, that's the only place there's a vertex here. If I wanted to go to a building, the vertex are in the corners. So you can see I can't snap into the middle, but I can snap to the corner. So I have a line here. And I might just uh, say I oh, let's send it all the way up. and finish it. And the same as before, I can start here, I can go all the way up here, and I go across, and because I have this snapping, it will snap onto that point there, and I can say finish. So snapping is a really useful tool um, when you are creating your uh, representations. I'm reasonably happy with my uh, map. There's one thing I might want to do more, is if I want to go into my buildings, uh, maybe I should turn um, this for safety of, you know, things can go wrong. I'll just save my edits. So now they're all saved. My, the reason why this one is blue is because it's selected. So I just say clear selection. Now that's not selected any longer. So, um, reasonable happy with my map. I would like to have some small labels on the buildings. Again here, may often in ArcGIS and in QGIS, you can right click on an object. Uh, so, uh, oh sorry, I'm not, in, I want to be in my content, sorry. So I can right click on it here and I can turn on labeling. First of all, I will set the preferences of what do I want to label. Um, and I want to label the use of it. And uh, I can do different things uh, towards how it's done, but that's fine. And um, I will then go back to my contents and I will turn on labeling. And you can now see that it has, oops, I didn't think I get got my labeling right there. Labeling class, uh, I just wanted to, the U, maybe I have to clear this out. Uh, it was labeling with the length of them. It could be the bill, the square meters. I just wanted to label with the use. Um, so now we've got the labeling with the use on. So we can add labels also to our map relatively simple. Of course, in the later video, I'll be talking much more about these more advanced ways of, um, of working with our 
uh, representations or presentation of our data. Final thing I'll talk about is that I would now like to make an ice layer out of this. So um, I'll go up to my insert. So I'll insert. Insert is in this case related to the whole project, and I will create a new layout, which is going to be uh, an A3 in landscape. So we'll create a layout, and uh, what we could see is that um, we in our catalog now have uh, both uh, maps. We have one map, and we also have a layout. In my layout, um, change the context. Uh, what I can do here is that I can insert, first of all, I'll insert a data frame. You can choose default, which will bring the whole coverage, in this case, the whole world, which will be sparse screen. But let's use the zoom level that I have in um, my map. And I'll insert this, and in it inserts. My, um, my area from before, my nice little map, and I can add additional things. So I could have a north arrow. I can make it a bit bigger, drag in the corners of it, and move it over to the corner. Um, I can insert a scale bar, and um, if I just click, I'll get the default one. I will think I want uh, a scale bar. I like this look here. So it will bring me a scale bar. Um, one obvious thing is that this one is in kilometers, which is not really suitable for this scale. So if I right click, it has something called properties. And here I can say that my unit should not be. Um, kilometers but meters um, so now it has changed to meters at the moment it's a bit uh, 75 and they're not nice and rounded I can change this by instead of having this uh, V size behavior I can change it to adjust width and I can say I want my units to be um, let's say 100 meters so now I have nice rounded units in meters um, typically, we'd also want to insert the text. So, click where we want our text, edit the text. So, this is a uh, Roskilde University. Roskilde University. Um, I can change how it's displayed. So, I can go to symbols. It will give me some default values here. I can choose from what they call a gallery, or I prefer to go to properties and appearance and say that I want regular and I want it to be, let's say, 36. Um, and let's have that something like that. That looks nice, and I can move it down. Um, final detail I want is I probably want a legend. So I choose a legend. Say I want, let's say I want the legend up here in the corner, drag that area, and it has now inserted a legend. All of these things can be tweaked and made my, very much nicer, but as I said, this will be um, in a later video. This is just the basic cut of how we work with ArcGIS Pro. Finally, I want to print it or disseminate it, send it to people as a PDF, whatever. So this is all in this share ribbon. And here I can, uh, I can print my layout, or I can export it. So that will be send it to a printer. I'll just say export. It will default to um, a PDF. That's fine with me. I can store it on my desktop. Call it a hook. It's important to set um, the DPI. So dots per inch. If it's for printing purposes, so 300, that's a okay print. It's not too good, it, but it's a, 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 a low quality print, laser print. Um, 600, 1200 is high quality print for screen use. Uh, 90, 100 DPI is appropriate. 
uh, others use it as um, as a 300d drive for print users so i say export and it will then create my um, pdf document for you so i'm now finished i have um, gone through creating a project loading some existing uh, data the railroads i have added paths and buildings i have made a layout and i've now exported so if i now just close this down for a moment hopefully on my desktop this PDF here is my book PDF that is created and if I open it I have also managed to export this data as a PDF that I can email so hope you like this uh, video on how the basic GIS operations implemented in Q in ArcGIS there's also one where I'll do more or less the same in QGIS so you can watch that and I uh, hope you liked it and see you in one of my other videos bye